Today's question is, and we hear this frequently, is what your church is or what are your individual thoughts on consuming alcohol or drinking alcohol? Mm -hmm. um, where does your church stand on this? And before we, we go too far down, let me begin by saying where we firmly stand is the fact that Scripture is very clear that drunkenness is a sin. Oh, absolutely. You know, I right. don't think we can debate that. You can, mm -hmm. you know, you can... You know, whatever you want to comment, Scripture is very clear very that drunkenness clear. is an absolute sin. Do not be controlled by wine, which can lead to debauchery, uh, but be filled with the Spirit. And it's funny because so often we get the first part right, don't drink wine, but also be filled with the Spirit. That's about control. Who is controlling mm -hmm. you? And so if we're allowing alcohol to control us, or really anything outside of the Word of God to control us, we'd definitely say that's a sin. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that uh, um, we can look at a myriad of of things that we, if we place too much of an emphasis on huh. on something, it, it even a good thing, yeah, can, it'll be it'll become sin. Yeah, if you in live our hurry, wrong through your kids, right. that's a sin. If you're putting your sin as an idol, you know we know the story of Abraham and, and Isaac, and yeah. and uh, you know we don't want to do that. We always want to magnify the name right. of the Lord Jesus, bring our kids up in, in discipleship, and they need to see us and yeah. and all. This. So anything could be if we're controlled by anything outside of the Holy Spirit's oh, sin. You know, there's this perception out there that right. that that everything that God creates and 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 uses is can be for his good but it also we as a human race can take anything that god has designed and make it bad just right because that's our nature right that's our nature and the same is true with alcohol right right and so i would say as we said drunkenness absolutely sin. yeah that's non-debatable i think each individual needs to pray and seek the lord on whether or not he can indulge in a beer at home, a glass of wine with his wife when they're out to dinner, those kinds of things. Um, because for me, most people have heard my testimony, my background is addiction. And so I had several years of living in addiction, mostly alcohol. There was drug abuse, but I, I alcohol was really the thing that mm -hmm. controlled my life for, for a long time. Right. You know, And I remember telling myself, um, as long as I don't drink alone, as long as I don't drink when I'm at work, if I don't do those two things, <laughs> then I'm not an alcoholic. It didn't matter that I was blacking out every night, not remembering anything. Right. I was obviously an alcoholic, um, because I was, it was a day I had to have it. I needed it to take the edge off. I needed it in my work. I needed it in my, you know, gave me boldness or whatever, but eventually it became where it controlled me. And so it definitely became a sin. So for me, I abstained completely even though I've had 20 something years of being clean and sober and not having a drink, uh, you know, if I ever start to question, well, maybe I can have one because it's been that long. The Holy spirit immediately goes, why do you have to have one? Well, you hit on the, you, know? you hit on the core, th core word there. You, you, in your mind and in your heart, you needed it, right? You needed it for a purpose. You yeah. needed it for this instead of, you know, we need the Holy spirit, right? to give us courage. We need the Holy Spirit right. to take the edge off. We need the Holy Spirit to move in our life, to give us confidence or, Absolutely. or whatever it is. And so when it becomes a need, you know, we have to ask, what is it? What is the need right. for, right? Is, is the need to replace what God can do in our lives versus not, right? right? And so and I always look at, and I, I had, this is, this has been a change in my heart over, over a long period of time. Cause I, I was like you, I used to partake, pretty regularly um to the point my dad was a my dad was what you called a friendly alcoholic matter of fact he, he some people drank they got angry got mean got abusive my dad when he drank became everybody's favorite guy you know <laughs> like and, the old Bud Light commercial I love you man <laughs> yeah he was absolutely and I love you man in fact I remember coaches tell me all the time man I loved your dad I said the only thing is is that when my dad went everywhere everywhere he was he was he was pretty sauced and he, he was a manageable alcoholic. Right. And and so nobody saw the problem in that. And I never saw the problem. And so I thought, well, my dad was a likable guy when he yeah. when he had a few drinks. And so I didn't think anything was wrong with that and problem with that. The problem was is that there was things that ha were happening behind the scenes that I never knew about with my mom sure. that, yeah. that I learned later in life. And so I didn't think it was any, any problem to have a few beers and or have a, a you know uh, a glass of bourbon. Huh. 
and hang out or even more than a glass of bourbon, mm-hmm. typically a few. And, well, and, and I think you said something right too, is you're like, you can almost justify by going, it, it enhanced my father's personality so mm-hmm. much that I enjoyed that more. So why is that wrong? And, and again, what we said a while ago, he was being transformed by alcohol, not transformed by right. his relationship with Christ. Right. And so that's what has to transform me is who I am in Christ, not who I am in the vine <laughs> and, the, and the vine. Yeah. I mean, in the bottle or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, cause I can tell you, you, you take, you drink a little more than you should and you are a different person. Yeah. You well, know? and for me, I remember the gradual, you know, it was like, I, got, I would feel the effects after one glass or one beer or whatever. And then over time it was like way more than one, you know? And yeah. so it started. So for me, I would say, is it a sin for me to, to, to drink a glass of alcohol? For me, it absolutely would be because I don't know where that would lead me. You, you know what I'm saying? But there are other people You're who, taking a risk. Yeah, I am taking a risk, and I don't want to take that risk. You know, right. why do I have to prove? If I have to do it to prove it to myself, mm-hmm. then that's a pride thing. Mm-hmm. And pride goes before the fall, right. right? So I choose to completely abstain. Now, if somebody was to ask me, uh, I, like I tell my son, because alcoholism seemed to have been a pattern in my family. So although my father really wasn't an alcoholic, um, his father was and all of his brothers. My mother's father also was an alcoholic and one of her brothers and many of her relatives. So it's on both sides of my family. So my son would ask me, why did you even do it? And I was like, son, I just didn't have the wisdom that where I grew up in church, where I was being discipled and, and mm-hmm. understanding that all I needed was Jesus. You have that leg up on me. And he's like, well, I'm never going to do it. So I recommend to him because the way it is in our family, right. why take the chance? It's like, I always say, I don't have to worry about being bit by a poisonous rattlesnake. You know why? I don't play with rattlesnakes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you were like, well, I play with snakes, but to me that would seem foolish. So for me, it would be foolish yeah. and unwise to consume of alcohol. And I think it, I think I passed that on to my son. So I would say for our instance, then stay away. But there are many people that can have a glass of wine or a beer without even thinking about it. I think time and place is also important. You know, if I'm, uh, I know for me personally, we can't in community around here because it is a sticking point. And so if we were to go over to, to loopy tortillas this afternoon and have a margarita, <coughs> would it be a sin to have a drink? Maybe not, but yet really it would because we're in a position where we could cause someone to stumble within our own body, right? Within our own church. And so if I, if I'm like hanging out with you, Dave, and I, we're going, maybe we're going on a trip and we pull in someplace and I, and I want a beer, and I drink one, I am because I know your situation. I know your history. I know your past. Right. I'm putting it in front of you yeah. as a way of in, in, in creating a temptation right. in you, maybe or maybe not. Maybe you're right. strong will, but I don't know that. I'm creating a bad situation for you. So I'm, not, lo- I'm, yeah, not, you're not, showing love. I'm not loving you right. in the right way, uh, you know, so that you don't stumble. It's not the, I don't want to cause you to stumble. It's, I don't, I love you enough right. to not put you in that situation where you could possibly stumble. And it may not happen at that moment, right. but it could happen in a couple of weeks because you, yeah, sure. it takes time. You know, sin sometimes doesn't just yeah, happen you get immediately. The evil one. You know, I, I was telling somebody this the other day that uh, because of a lot of the, the, the motorcycle ministry that I do, there's oftentimes that I find myself at places where people are drinking, but I always have one of my brothers with me or somebody with me. I'm never by myself, you know, just to make, you know, just to kind of watch me, so to speak. Um, And it doesn't bother me at all. I could be at those deals, but then again, I'm just there for an hour or two and then I'm gone. Somebody had asked us to go on a cruise with a group of people. Most of them were talking about how they were, man, I can't wait. I can, I can unwind with some margaritas and drink. And I, I told my wife, I was like, I don't think it's a good idea for me to go on that because it's seven days or whatever. And it's all day. Maybe I shouldn't because I could find myself maybe justify. Well, I'm on the boat. It's just one or two. I won't do that when I get home, but I don't need to roll the dice. I don't need to take yeah. the chance. And so I, I chose not to go on the cruise. Now we may as a family go on a cruise or we may go with your family or something like that, yeah. but I just, 
thought in that instance, that might not be the, the smartest thing. So I think what you really have to do when it comes to this issue of alcoholism is pray, what is, what is best for you and your family? And to remember that our kids are watching and other people that might not be as far along spiritually as you are, I would, I would take that very seriously and make sure that I prayed about it. And, and that's what I would say when it comes to the issue of alcohol. Hey, thanks for watching this segment of the Mission City Podcast. There is more content in the full session, so click right here to watch the full episode and click here to subscribe and see more content like this. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.